what did you do to challenge uh, channel Kenzie's character when the body switching episode went on? Because you did that so fabulously. Thank you so much. Um, I mean, uh, one, I have an amazing actress to study. Oh, of. Chris Holden Reed. It's Holden-Reed. so true. <laughs> who uh, was so generous with me, I would actually go over to Ksenia's house and we would do the scenes together and we would videotape each other doing our lines. So. Um, got to get some of the intonation from that, and then, you know, there was a couple little dance moves that I've seen her do over the years, and I just incorporated into my own dance style. Yeah. <laughs> the craziest part about that was when um, KC and I had to kiss, and I had to be him kissing Kiara, and, and me and KC would get them to do it, like, over and over again, and see, like, like where does his hand go, like, how does he kiss her? How does he look at her? And we would film it and like analyze, analyze, analyze. So and it was so funny because you know, Nash, I'm, I'm taller, so yeah. I'm I'm holding Lena in a certain and way. Casey's like here and on so me, like. So Casey's uh. reaching out, and she's like, ah. <laughs> and Casey, of course, is such a dude. He's like, no, I don't bend like that. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It was a great episode for us to do. Next. Uh, yes, Cherry. So, what has been your favorite episode? Well, 209, the, the one we were just talking about, was definitely up at the top for, I think, all of us. Yes. I also have one in season three, though, that I guess I can't really... <laughs> you tell us another one. Watch one. Uh, yeah, that was good. Uh, um, so what was the 306. One? 306. Again, me, we're together. We're together, and it's all, yeah, it's me yeah. and Chris going crazy. Going places you never thought we'd go. Yeah. Let's just say growlings involved. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also love 205, which was the Brotherhood of the Fae, because we got to see some of Dyson's backstory. And, you know, I love bringing the period piece stuff. I really think it blows out the show and really gives it a, de a depth you know, of history and experience. And I hope to see more of that. <laughs> okay, okay. Question yeah. here. Hi, thank you. I'm Anna. Um, now that you're in the U.S., is there a difference between what is allowed to be shown in terms of censorship and editing? Oh, uh, no, no, no. Actually, I get in trouble for this event, apparently. But uh, sci-fi is a minute and a half shorter. So I have to cut a minute, a minute and a half out of every show, which is torture. Yeah. Absolute torture. And sometimes one character loses a minute, a uh, few seconds, the other character. Sometimes the story changes. But sci-fi has been super supportive. Uh, it's an effort every time to keep the exact same story. Uh, I don't cut the sexuality. I don't cut any of the things that people are worried about. It's tough to tell the story a minute and a half shorter, but uh, it's, I think we're pulling it off. Yeah. Or is that minute and a half back on the DVDs? Yeah, that minute and a half is back on the DVD. So the DVD will have, and actually it does make a difference sometimes, you know, but uh, we get the same story out each time. Next? Uh, yes, you, no, you, you. Oh, Sorry, wait. I don't know your name. The Jim. woman behind you. Oh, her? Oh, yes. Sh my name's Cherie. Uh, kind of along those lines, Jay, if you had an opportunity to air this on a premium cable channel, what level would you take it uh, to? We'd be stepping it up. I mean, mm -hmm. when we originally started this thing, uh, the rules were uh, tougher than we thought as to what we could do. And it's very funny to say you can only show this much of the top of the butt, you know, <laughs> and uh, you can only shine. You have to measure it every time. It's really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 and I can see him having to say, Chris, going, oh, I got to cover her here when I'm doing this. And it's strategic really, out placement. Yeah, and the girls are doing this, and everybody's watching what they do, and uh, so that makes it actually that is a, a hard to do, uh, and since it's a very important show that the sexuality gets shown each week, uh, I think we pull it off. But it would be nice if we had a little less restriction. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Yes, sir. So, um, Kinsey and Hale, more friends, uh, friends with benefits. Um, <laughs> uh, there's definitely a chemistry there. Of, can you give us a? a I hate to where it's going. I can't, because then I would ruin where it's going. Yeah. Um, you know, they're they have a special bond. I think they connect on on many levels. Um, and, and they're there for each other and they have fun and, and they tease each other and challenge each other um, as far as where it's going to go and who feels what. I don't know if I can reveal that. Fair enough. Good girl, good girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting well, they're, 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 like, they're like the sidekick club. They just kind of, because they both You know, with. yeah, they have these people that they truly care about and love and they definitely connect that way. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes. Hi, Christine. 
I just wanted to know what kind of in season three, what are we going to see with the dark fae, what kind of sinister characters are we going to have? Uh, <laughs> we're we're shaking it a bit up in season three. Uh, you've seen a lot of the light fae world. I'm going to show you a little more of the dark. Yes, sir. Hi, Jimmy. How you doing? Um, now, Castenia, you are obviously the only one that seems to not have any powers. You're not fae. Um, a lot well, of sci-fi. Don't sci say that like it's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Excuse me, yeah. Um, you know who we follow, of course. And uh, a lot of these sci-fi shows will turn a human character and like, let's give him power, let's turn him into something else. Um, would you want to see her go down that road to somehow suddenly get some pay powers? Or would you rather stay sort of human puppets? <laughs> you know, I think I've had a good taste of like being the human and having to rely um, on, you know, Kenzie's courage and fearlessness. I feel like that's almost her power at this point. I won't lie, I think it's really exciting, the thought of having a fake power and, and being able to play around and kind of, you know, be at par with all my fake friends and, and be able to do more stunts and more action in that way by using some sort of fake power when we're put in these crazy situations where we have to fight. And, and um, so, you know, yeah, of, of course I've thought about it and, you know, we'll see. What would that power be? What would you want? That's a very good question <laughs> that I never know how to answer. Um, something awesome. <laughs> like in a perfect world, you know, I feel like Kenzie's power would be used for good if she could like stop a war with a joke. I mean, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be pretty nice. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I got begged in one of the interviews uh, here to not let Kenzie ever have. Yeah, someone power. was very. Upset. Somebody was very upset. <laughs> almost in. Please don't give her a power. You know, and it was that kind of plea. And uh, the response I got is that she is more impressive than anybody sometimes because she has no powers, but she stands her own. Well, like the character said it best in 209 with, you know, you're weak, you're, you're frail, and the strongest person I know. Yeah, touching moment, everybody cried. Love that. My friend over there. Adam from Germany. Hi. Hi. Uh, guten Tag. <laughs> guten Tag. One of the things that makes Lost Girls are the one-liners, and I'm wondering what Ken Kensianism is your favorite one, and have you ever come up with one yourself? Like on set, for example? There's been some ad-libbing. Sometimes it's kept, sometimes it's not kept. Um, but, um, you know, if I'm really in the moment, it's so sometimes something comes to mind. Um, I've had so many, and it, they've all, like, mixed into one because of how many episodes we've done, but something that stands out and that someone actually reminded me about uh, yesterday was... Uh, a, an episode where Anna and I did the speed dating and uh, Kenzie sits down in front of this unassuming gentleman and he asks her what her favorite quote about regret is and she goes, my favorite literary quote about regret, hmm, let me see. Well, as the, the great poet Ludacris once said, <laughs> regret is for suckers, for suckers, for suckers, regret is for suckers. Bitch, and she just she just thought she was pretty smart in that moment. So that was that was one of my favorites. It was so fun to to fill the film those scenes. Great. Yes. Yeah, um, for Dyson, it seems like, um, and this is a two part question. Uh, with Trick, there seems to be a lot of history uh, with you and Trick. You've obviously known each other for centuries. Um, is there going to be more revelations of how much you and Trick know, especially about Bo's background? Because obviously Trick knows something that hasn't been revealed yet, obviously, and we're getting really deep into season two here. So is that going to be revealed either later in the season or in season three? We have talked about this, and uh, there is we have ideas about more period flash, right. part of the flashbacks about where they meet. Because in, in 205, when we do the Brotherhood of the Wolf, you see Dyson go off, and he's like basically on a line. So we don't know when Trick and him actually started, when he gave his allegiance to Trick. So... And at the same time, in season three, we've sort of given you a couple hints that Trick has chosen Dyson. Oh. And then the second part of that question is, um, also with the Ash, there seems to be a lot of contention between Dyson and the Ash, even though he's, you know, trying to, you know, do his bidding because he's a light fay, that's the leader of the light fay, but mm -hmm. where's the contention? Is that going to be revealed of where the contention is coming from? Because it's obvious that you've known him before. Well... We're talking about Lachlan, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, Dyson just doesn't trust Lachlan. He doesn't think she, he has the both best interests at heart. Um, and you know, in his core, he's a protector. He's a defend. You know, he, that's one of his sort of base sort of um, 
character traits, and uh, so he will he will act aggressively towards anyone he thinks is a threat towards Bo, and that that wherever you guys are, he still thinks that. Great, Jim. Hey, Jim. Hi. Yeah, uh, Chris. Now um, you just said how you want your protective the character is, and you know, your light side. Uh, you're cursed, of course, to not fall over again. I'm assuming that curse will eventually be lifted. Um, but um, <laughs> but uh, I'm curious. So, um, could he be cursed maybe to go dark side, and would you want him to go dark side? Would he be an adversary? Yeah. Though? Um, that would be very interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, we've gotten to explore a lot with Dyson in the last two seasons. Um, it's been a pretty dark road for Dyson in season two, and uh, you know, I, I think. It will either bring him back, or we can push him further. And yeah, I mean, I love playing bad guys. It's so fun. So, um, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, like, it's it would be like you in Underworld yeah. in Lost Girl. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> evil wolf. Needles in the eye. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would be definitely interested in exploring that. That would be a lot of fun. Next, yes. Um, going to season three, and I've uh, gone through a lot since then. Are there any other aspects of the character that you wish could be further explored? I'm Christina from Singapore, by the way. <laughs> wow. Um, what your backstory? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we have such a, you know, the Fae world is so broad, and we pull from so many historical, mythological, folklore things that we have such a vast uh, research vast amount of research material that we can pull from. And I would love to, if we had the time, I mean, Law School takes place in a very sort of isolated, one city, one group of people. I wish we had the time and the budget, maybe if we do a feature film, we can like <laughs> pull it out. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna. I would love to see us, you know, like travel the world. Like we, we have we have these abilities to teleport, we found some of these, some of these fae, you know, if we could, go to Singapore and shoot in Singapore and that, you know, I would love to bring in more of an international feel to the show so it doesn't feel, uh, feel so rural and colloquial. That oh, I used good words. I know, I kind of said it better <laughs> myself. Wow, that wow. was very good, very good. Great, Cherry? I was wondering, what are the personality traits of yourselves as normal people that you bring into the characters that you're playing? Did that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> um, Obviously a huge ludicrous fan. <laughs> <laughs> huge ludicrous fan. My whole performance is based on my love for ludicrous. You know what though, you, she Cassandra is a massive lover of music and that definitely is part of Kenzie. Thank you. Chris. Um, <laughs> when we started, you know, the show, I always felt like I I was like, oh God, how are they going to cast me? Like, I'm just so, I'm so not funny. Like, my entire career, I played very dramatic roles, and I was so, the, the comedy aspect was like so overwhelming and, 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 and challenging, and, and it's just something that I'd never done before. And I always didn't, I didn't know that I had like a sense of humor. Like, I didn't, comedy or laughing or none of that. I mean, obviously, I laugh and I love good jokes, but I feel like the more I play Kenzie, the more almost I become her in my own life, and I, I realized that I love to laugh and I love to make people laugh, and comedy has kind of become such a huge love of mine. Um, so I think it kind of works both ways. Uh, Kenzie gives me that, and I feel like maybe I give Kenzie, um, you know, a sense of loyalty. I'm, you know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my friends and family, and I cherish them you know, with every fiber of my being, and I and I understand, you know, that loyalty. So, so what she feels for Bo, I, I, you know, I, I, I feel it, and I, I can understand it. So, I, I hope that answers the question. That's not bad. Your turn. My turn. Wow. Um. He's brooding and sexy <laughs> in real life. So. <laughs> But I'm also a total goofball. He's a total, like him as Kenzie in episode 209 was actually the real Chris. Like, cool. <laughs> like his, his real self finally got to come that's out and that's why he's so much fun. It, it's, you know, Dyson is, uh, I, I think what um, what I had to really focus on with Dyson is the fact that he's like a millennia and a half old. And so I really pulled from the more serious sides of serious parts of myself, which has been nice to focus on, you know. I. I Kasani's not joking. I, I am like, I like to have fun, and I'm, I'm a bit of a, 
scoundrels you're sometimes. Ken, like you're Kenzie. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Kenzie in, in, inside. Um, so yeah, to, to focus on, you know, to bring out the integrity, you know, I, I, I think I am a man of integrity, so that's kind of what I grounded it on. And then, um, and just, yeah, you know, that uh, the seriousness that experience can bring you, that nothing really surprises you, that there's, you know, that you consider all aspects and you have seen as many perspectives as you possibly can. And, you know, a wisdom, I think, that's, that's what I sort of grounded it. Great, I'm from Germany. Hmm. Another question from Xenia and maybe for the rest of us too, but I'm not too sure about that. Both you and Anna Silk have the most spectacular collection of clothes on the show. <laughs> uh, do you get to keep any of them? And there also seem to be a lot of shots of boots and shoes in the shirt series. <laughs> Is this on purpose or not? I don't know, Jay. Is yeah, it on the, boot, the boots and shoes are on purpose. It's the boots a common, have like a, it's a common line. They have like a life of their own on the show. Yeah. Um, I got to write an episode once and I made them insult her boots. Which did not go down well for <laughs> Kenzie at all. I, our wardrobe is so amazing. Ann Dixon, who who was our wardrobe designer for the first two seasons, just, I mean, we are so lucky. From tailor fitted, you know, leather vests for Chris and and jackets and pants and and I mean, she's just. I don't think anybody else could have created the look of the show. Uh, for myself, every time I have a wardrobe fitting, I'm like, oh my god, can you guys buy me one of these so I can take them home? Um, the shoes, Kenzie can't live uh, in flats. So no matter what it is, even if, uh, you know, we have episodes where I'm like, have to be running through the forest, like gravel, like for, it doesn't matter. If I had to be vol uh, running through a volcano, I would still be in like high-heeled shoes. Um, and, you know, it's, it's separate pieces like jackets. Um, I have this one gray jacket that's very like, Lady Gaga-esque. I actually went out and bought that jacket for myself and I wear it in my real life. And um, Kenzie's jeans, um, I have these really cool jeans called Heart Attacks and they're red and they have like laces and zippers. And so everything she has is very, uh, not your typical standard look. And it's a really eclectic mix of so many different styles. So all the time I'm like, I wish I was cool enough to wear that in my real life. That piece, maybe I can pull off, maybe I can't, but I always want to take everything home. and. You know, maybe one day, one day in the future when we're done this crazy show, Jay will. Well, actually, he's, he's stealing all our clothes all the time. That's like, true. He goes into the wardrobe true. office. I lose weight to steal his. <laughs> he's always stealing our clothes. That's why we can't get him. Great. Um, Chris, Christine, right? Christina. No, Christina, no. Sorry, what was your name? Cherie. Cherie, sorry. Cherie, Jimmy, <coughs> and then you? Brian. Brian, great. So uh, this question is for Jay and Ksenia. Uh, the writers have alluded to drop little snippets of Kenzie's past. Are we going to get to see more of Kenzie's backstory? In oh, the well, we have a lot of fun with Kenzie's backstory. She's uh, much more complex than you see uh, so far. So we love doing that. Every time she's in a situation where she has to perform some undercover operation. She usually gets to flash back to something she did in her earlier days. So, you know, I think she's pretty complex. I hope. I, I really hope yeah. that as we as we go on we really delve more into her backstory because it's just as crazy as, as she is and I, I would love for the fans to be able to see where this girl came from. Like who is she really? What made her who she is? And everything she had to deal with when she was living on the streets and with her stepdad and mafia connections. And like, you know, it's just so, it's such a vibrant, vibrant backstory that she has. So I would love to see more of it. There's a little thing in season three without giving anything away where we use a Wizard of Oz sort of reference. And I love it. You know, and it sort of talks about where she came from. Great, Jimmy. <laughs> Hell's Kitchen, what? Um, <laughs> I should represent. Um, <laughs> now, Kenzie, we were talking about your background there. Um, she's a survivor, and uh, it seems like it will take anything to survive. And sort of relation to what I asked Chris, do um, you think Kenzie could go down that dark road, and, and even though she's not Faye, but maybe work for the dark side against Bo eventually? I know they're like best friends, but like, you know, not come an informant, you know? Would you like to I see her I feel like the again? entertaining answer would be, yeah, of course, <laughs> who knows? But, you know, I feel like the only thing that could even n not get in the way of her and Bo, because I really feel like they're just attached, earlier I said at the heart, not at the hip, they're attached at the heart. 
So it would have to take, you know, earth, wind, and fire to to take her away from Bo. Um, but I think the fact that, you know, when Nate comes into her life, he kind of introduces this whole idea of you can have a normal life, and we can run away, and you can be happy, and I can make you happy. And I think that's just something the seed has been planted, you know, and I think it's only fair for Kenzie to think about that. I think it's only fair for her to have love and to be happy and, and you know, she's going to get older. No one's going to get older. She's going to get older in age and, and, you know, what if she wants a kid or, like, what if she wants, like, experience, like, normal human things? It's, it's something that I think she's kind of slowly maybe going to start to ponder. Great. Brian? Yes. Can you touch upon some of the big contrasts uh, that we can expect next season compared to the previous? Ah, well, the only thing I could really say without giving too much away is you've seen a lot of the light side of the world they live in, and we want to show you a little more of the dark side. And that info, that has an impact on pretty much everybody. Does it ever. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Anna? Um, one comment about the clothing before you shoot right now, pretty hot. So. <laughs> <laughs> Did you steal those from work? <laughs> no. Um, so my question is for the actors, um, how, have, how do you guys feel your characters have evolved from season one until now? And where do you, if you have a place, where do you want them to go? Or where do you want them to change? The first. All right. Um, you know, it's an, an interesting alchemy that happens between what your character's going through and what you're going through as the artist as well. Like, uh, season one, everything was fresh for us. We were creating the show. There was a lot of excitement. We, we, we were developing the world as, that we, as we were doing it. Season two, you get a little, you know, you know, you know what you're doing. So then that, that kind of experience also translates into your character. You're, for Dyson, I was going through a lot of darker stuff. And, um, in season three, I think we've really found our stride, you know, it's like, you, we really all, as artists, know what the show is about now, and uh, we know our characters so well that the two sort of really run parallel lines of, you know, of, of higher and higher ex uh, experience and a things that we can perform and bring to the show as well. So I'm really excited about season three and season four. I think season four is going to be kick oh, ass. We got a fun fun. <laughs> um, I agree with Chris. It so much depends on also what you're going through in your life. I feel like when I started the show, I, I was, I mean, not that I'm not young now, but I was younger and I, <laughs> I don't laugh. Um, I was younger and I feel like Kenzie was really just like a kid off the streets, you know, pickpocketing, stealing, whatever she had to do just to survive, just to make it through the day. And when she met Bo, she met her family and she got a, a purpose in life, which I feel that she never really had before. And I think so ever since then, we've, she's just been maturing and growing and, and um, really, I feel, you know, becoming a warrior in her own right. Um, so, and as for me, I, I've been maturing and I've been growing up, so I feel like she's really, you know, changing from a kid into a woman and she's trying to find her, her place in this crazy world that, that she's been in. And one thing that happens on a production level is the writers now get input from the actors as to what they think the character is because uh, Kenzie knows who Kenzie is and Dyson knows who Dyson is because they've lived it, you know, so. I think they so have a lot of Kenzie's Christmas. <laughs> so right. We are not our characters. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they get, no, no, but, they, but they, they actually know themselves and they know what they would do and what they would say or what their character would say. Yeah. So they have more input with the writers and, and that's a natural sort of growth of production. Next question. Um, <clears throat> Jim from TV Fanatic. I forgot to introduce myself. So I mentioned this to Jay in the back. How has it been working on a show that has had sexuality without declaration. You know, Bo has a relationship with two different people, but it's never set up a situation of asking the question of, of sexual orientation. I, I, and I love that aspect, that it's, it's about relationships with people. It's not about male or female. It's about basically hearts. Yeah. How's it been working on it? Have you, have you guys seen any kind of feedback from that or have you seen any pushback? Well, I think it's pretty evident in just our, in our fan base and who's enjoying the show. You know, we, we're, we're not a we're not a we're not a gay show. We're not a bi show. We're not a straight show. We we do touch on all these sort of different worlds without judgment or um, or um, 
you know, ah, sorry, what's the word I'm looking for? Ah, m mind freeze without, <laughs> anyway, without judging. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, like, yeah. thanks, but. Um, <laughs> or classified. So, yeah, and, and I think that that is, you know, the, definitely one of the beauties of the show and also one of the truths of relationships, you know. It's, it's not about what sexual orientation you are, it's about how you love and, and if you can and, and how you do that. I really like that about Lost Girl. Um, you know, I was hoping for a few more threesomes myself this year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next year, next year. Next year, maybe next year. Great, next question. I'm sorry, yeah, I don't hear you. I'm talking. Angela, sorry, from O Entertainment. And you have a very big female fan base. And many of those females are so engrossed into the genre of with dealing with books, with other types of stories, movies. I mean, you guys gather a lot of your background and your future of the episodes from a lot of, um, of that genre that has already been out there dealing with the Fae, or is it something that you just go by? And I mean, do you guys personally look into it? I mean, with yourselves? Well, I think, you know, it's kind of like there, there's that old saying, there's no new stories, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, we definitely pull from stuff that is already in the genre. Um, I don't think you can really avoid that. Um, as far as personal research, I mean, absolutely I researched where, I mean, I, I've read so many different books that deal with shifting and all kinds of different sci-fi and fantasy stuff that I had all kinds of different sort of little things that I could pull from for Dyson. Um, as far as the show goes, I know we're constantly pulling. Oh, yeah. We do, we have a big challenge for the writing department because every episode we try to take a social issue or a relationship issue or an emotional issue and we try to match it up with a mythological creature and that's a really huge challenge so that we had uh, a creature who wanted to live off your feeling of shame you know so we had to deal with people who had some uh, self-confidence issues some uh, insecurities and this guy could feed off them so uh, we did some father-son relationships, we did some best friend relationships, and we've had creatures that have challenged those. So we work, I, I think it's one of the special things about our show is we're actually not copying anybody else's things because mm -hmm. that matching of a social issue, a relationship issue, emotional issue with the creature, I don't think anybody's ever done that. Great, uh, I'm sorry, I'm calling you Germany, but what's your name? <coughs> <laughs> My name is Adam. That's right? Adam. Adam, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering, you're such a cult show, and um, when we introduced your show on our website, we compared it to Buffy, the Vampire Slayer. And I want to know what you think about those uh, comparisons, because we had a heated debate in our community about that comparison, if it's valid or not. So all of us? Yeah, to all of you. I think, I think you're the most qualified. Yeah, I, I have to be honest, I read the first couple chapters of the Buffy handbook uh, at the beginning mm -hmm. of this. And uh, when I sat with the writers, the original concept, uh, the very, very script was very, very uh, hard, vixen, sexy, rough. You know, there wasn't a lot of comedy. There wasn't as much fun when we first were developing this. And then one day, uh, I don't know, we were just goofing around about it. And everybody said, don't compare it to Buffy. Don't say Buffy. And even the writers have said to me, Jay, come on. That's a high hurdle for us to reach, you know. But I pushed it a fair bit with them that I want that sort of sensibility, uh, that fun, and we do. We, I mean, we sort of strive it. One episode actually came out, and somebody said, "Oh my God, I saw this on Buffy," and we had to throw it out. We had to throw out the whole script because it was too similar to a Buffy episode. But uh, we, uh, listen, there's a lot of comparisons to it. Uh, but we sort of like when I, when actually I was developing this uh, at a cafe in Cannes during the film festival, I said to somebody, "What would Buffy be?" 20 years later. And that was a question I asked, and I got a lot of input on that. So. Uh, Chair, yes? So, your fan base is passionate, loves you, is obsessed with you. Have you guys started getting fan art or really personal, especially from people who are gay or, or lesbian or don't look like the ideal of what people think they look like? Because your show is one of the ones that show people that look, unlike most people who look on TV, you know, people are short, some of them are fat, some are, you know, less than perfect looking. I mean, it's such a diverse. <laughs> 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 We're very 
lucky. We have uh, incredible, incredible fans. Um, we really we, do. Just yesterday, we got this beautiful um, kind of portrait of, of, four of, of the four of us. Trick, Ksenia, myself, and Adam. It was a beautiful hand done portrait. Yeah, and, and just it seems like anytime we're lucky enough to kind of meet our fans at, at one of these events, everyone always, not everyone, but quite a few people come with beautiful yeah. photos, portraits, and it's, it's just so humbling and it's so, you know, just so amazing that people take the time and are inspired, you know, to, 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 to do these pieces for us. Or even, I've seen so many of the videos that people cut together on the online, and honestly, I am so astounded by some of these people's yeah. um, editing savvy. Like yeah. I want them to cut my demo reel. <laughs> like they, they make they make us look so good, and <laughs> and yeah, we're honestly really grateful and 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 humbled by the, the response. We we didn't know, you know, you never know when you're creating something. And I'm really glad that there's actually a since we're talking about this, there was a director who came on the show, uh, a guest director, and, and he said that the reason he thinks the reason why the show is so successful is because all of us in real life have such great connections and I'm so glad that, that those friendships transcend through the screen and through the show out there and that you know the love and the trust we all feel for each other on set is uh, I think that's part of the show's dynamic and I, I think I'm so glad that it goes through the medium and that people feel that through through the work and through the television. As a producer I'm very lucky because these guys are all having fun they all work well together they're total pros and it's our reputation is the most fun production to work on. Period. Yeah, it is. And it shows. Well, yeah. It shows. Everybody's happy. Everybody's friends. Everybody goofs around. Yeah. When they have the time. When they have the time. It's a tight <laughs> schedule. No, but seriously, I've had directors call me up and say, I want to work on your show. I hate cop shows. I hate doing this. I hate doing procedural stuff. They don't hate it. They're just tired. Sorry, they're just tired. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't say it. <clears throat> they're just tired of it. And we have a reputation as fun. And I mean, and these guys like... They, you, you can really see that they enjoy working with each other. Great. Sue, so, um, are there any scenes that you guys have actually filmed that you, that were deleted or you know, removed from the episode that you wished had been put into the episode? Hmm. There's one that actually pops into my mind. I always think about this one. In the body switching episode, there was a scene where Kenzie trouble. as Dyson goes uh, oh, to yeah. the Ashes yeah. compound and one of her... Um, Work one of his oh god workmates from you know his police whatever friend um, is there and he's you know standing guard and Dyson oh god this is so confusing Dyson as Kenzie has to go and talk to his friend and obviously this friend just thinks you know it's a human standing in front of me and he's not very nice and and Dyson in this awkward state you know tries to seduce his friend so he could let him in and, and the scene was just I was very much looking forward to doing it unfortunately because of time restrictions we had to cut it out of the episode but it was it's just one that I always think about and I think oh my god it would have been so much fun you know to be Chris and you know he's you know touching his shirt and he feels so awkward in his body and, and, and you know looking at Kenzie and it's flirting just, with a dude and that flirting he knows. with a dude that he <laughs> works with yeah. and, I that remember we funny. worked that scene together a bit. We talked about yeah. it. And it was. It would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I don't. Remember. Christiane. Christiane. Okay. Uh, I. I. Did you touched upon about like the fan like star interactions. So how do you feel about like Lost Girl like coming to conventions? And I think you've been to a few of them now. That um, seeing like somebody dressed up in, as your character. How does that make you feel? And Great. if you came to, if you could come dressed up, or maybe you already have, what would you come dressed in? You know, I love these. I love these conventions. I think that it's a place where people can come and really express, like, how, what their passion and their love for all these different things that they're that they're into, whether it's anime or comics or shows. Um, you know, I, I think passion is one of the most important things of being human. And, uh, any any outlet you can have for it, the more the more outlets, the better. Um, well said, my friend. Thanks. Well said. Um, <laughs> as far as <laughs> see this friendship stuff in the cold. As soon as we get out the door, just at each other's necks. Yeah, so whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. As far as seeing someone dressed up as Dyson, <laughs> it'd be awesome. You know, go for it. I've seen a few girls in the, the signature Kenzie look. It's been pretty, pretty. Yeah. 
pretty awesome. Um, I don't know, who would you come dressed up as? I think I'd come as Catwoman. Yeah, you'd be a killer Catwoman. Um, God, I don't know, I've always been a Jedi fan, so. Rose. Just give him a lightsaber. Give me a and lightsaber, happy and I'm happy, exactly. <laughs> if it came with some force powers, that would be even better. But still working on that. Jimmy. Uh, uh, Chris, now, um, it seems that, that Bo and, and Dyson right now are fated to be together. Um, but again, like in, in other shows, you have those two characters a lot that are fated, and then someone else suddenly comes along, and it doesn't happen anymore. So, so it's suddenly this new person. Like, like I'm sorry for the Buffy comparison again, but like you know, it's Angel and Buffy, and then all of a sudden Spike was around. You know, um, do you think that could happen to either one of you? Like, uh, or do you think they belong together? Or do you think that there's someone else for you or someone else for her? No, I think well. From Dyson's point of view, I think they think I think he, he he's sure that they're belong together, that they belong together. Um, and I do too. But it's like you know, you gotta. It's TV, right? You gotta make things interesting. So if we were just together and happy go lucky, it would be. <laughs> it wouldn't have much of a show. Maybe I don't know. It would be the Brady Bunch. <laughs> the Brady Bunch. Um, I'm I'm sure they had some marital disputes too that I can't remember. To be honest. Um, but yeah, you know, I think that's part of I think that's part of Dyson's core character arc, or his 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 sort of truth is that, you know, uh, we've explored it a bit. The, the you know the wolf's mate for life, and you know this this sort of one love, and um, no matter what happens, I think that there will be always something definite between Dyson and Bo. Like whether it does end up going that way or not, who knows? See how many seasons we get. <laughs> Adam from <coughs> Thank you. Uh, what is on your TiVo right now, or your DVR? What are your favorite current TV shows? I don't own either of those products, <laughs> uh, but I love the Game of Thrones. Uh, I read those books when I was in university, like 15 years ago. I'm so glad that they're taking that they're doing such a great TV production of them. I love watching them. I also love Breaking Bad. I think that's a fantastic show. Um, and I, unfortunately, I don't have time watch TV much, so I I know there's some great shows out there like Homeland. I was just going to say. I stole it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, you know, there's there, the thing about TV right now is that it's really in its golden era, I think. You know, um, like AMC, the HBOs, the Showcase, the Showtimes, they're, they're creating these great shows that you get to really explore storylines that you can't in film. You know, like someone was asking me a comparison between Underworld and, and and Dyson or, or and Lost Girl. And so we have 48 or at the end maybe 60 hours of time to explore a character. And in a film you have 90 minutes. You know, so TV, if you do it properly, is an incredibly rewarding um, media. So I can't remember the question and I'm rambling. Thanks I'm also a fan of the yeah. New Girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Homeland and New Girl. Yeah. Great, Christine. Yeah. What's the most challenging set that you have worked in? In our careers, or on Lost Girl? On Lost Girl. Most challenging set. Set. Oh God, the hall, that hallway, the the tunnel that we just shot in in season three, with all the peat moss and like it was just dust in the air. <laughs> we need to walk around in gas masks half the Sometimes. time with all the places we yeah. <laughs> film at. Uh, For us, like at Lost Girl, we're very unlucky with the weather. It's either like below 30 degrees Celsius, and Anna and I are like in little skirts, like freezing to death, or it's like so hot that our makeup is just like running off our faces. We're all in leather. We're standing in like the blazing sun. Like weather-wise, it's always kind of kind of a challenge. We're never lucky with like the perfect sunny day with some crisp wind. It, it never happens. So that's something that we're always facing. We don't have challenging sets. Our sets are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Production design on, sh on the show is done by Ian Brock, and yeah. you know, it's it's brilliant, without a doubt. He deserves some recognition, and hopefully, he wins awards soon. Yeah. Okay, guys, we'll wrap in about another five minutes because I know we have a gentleman here who has some online stuff, video stuff to do. Show hands how many more questions we have. Okay, Jimmy, and then we'll go. Who's to the set prankster? <coughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think it's a tie. It, yeah, we, we've got a bunch of, we've got a few. There's me, there's Zoe. 
Oh, oh. Zoe. Zoe. Yeah. yeah. So he uh, makes us all laugh, and then the cameras roll, exactly. and we're all like laughing hysterically, and she's all like a character. We're like, thanks, yeah. Zoe. She's Zoe does hysterical. the intellectual sort of, the, the witty sort of garb, uh, the witty stuff, and I basically walk in with my pants down and playing guitar. <laughs> yeah, that's totally true. <laughs> and me and Chris are always like tripping over each other somehow. Yeah. First season, one of our first episodes, we sat on Bo and Kenzie's couch, and they completely flipped over and we fell, and we thought, yeah. well, this is going to be the future of yeah, our relationship. That's true. So anytime we're together, it's like a hazard. K-Star and I are always <laughs> dancing together, or like, you know. We're, we're, we're the revelers. <laughs> And, uh, you know, unfortunately, Anna has so much work on her plate that we try not to distract her. But, uh, but she's hysterical in yeah, her own right. Oh, my God. Is. Great sense of humor. Uh, Adam from Germany. <laughs> A question for Ksenia. Um, you were born in Latvia. Do you speak Latvian or Russian? And uh, could you imagine going back to Russia and this lost girl being shown in Latvia? Um, unfortunately, I don't speak Latvian. I did when I was a young girl. I, I am fluent in Russian. Um, when I moved to Canada, it was just, I, I was a little kid and it was a lot for me to learn. I had to learn English, I had to keep my languages, so I ended up with English and Russian. Um, in terms of if Lost Girl is shown in Latvia, I believe it is. Um, I know that it's online everywhere. I've had a, a really fantastic fan response from Latvia, which is, you know, so touching and, and and um, did you have another question? Did I answer all your questions? Did you ask me if um, I go back? Yeah. I do. Uh, unfortunately. Or if you want to work in Latvia, maybe. As I would love to. I would love to. There's actually on Twitter right now, there's um, a whole campaign for this film called Hybrid Vigor, and it's a film shot on location in Latvia. And they're, you know, getting their funding through Indiegogo, and, and I mean, it's like a massive Twitter thing. And when I first saw it, I was like, oh my god, there's a movie filming on location in Latvia. Like, I would love to, I would love to do that. I would love to be home and have my family come visit me on set, and you know, it just it would be a dream. So hopefully one day. This was kind of one of Ksenia and I's yes. first bonding experiences. Chris is Latvian. I'm also. We're, we're, we're both half Latvian. We're like we're like the only two like Latvian actors. Well, I can't say that. There's I don't one know, other. Like, one other actually who yeah. who is also on our on show. The show yeah. And it's just rare because it's so rare for yeah. somebody to be from Latvia. Yeah. And I mean, go figure. On I one show, they got the, the two Latvian Canadian actors. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Uh, I think Anna. Anna, we had you. Right. Um, how do you guys spend your time in between seasons? Are you working on other projects? Last year when we when we finished uh, season two, we really had no time at all. We were lucky to just take a breath and, and you know, go swim in the ocean and just like relax and, yeah. and get some rest so we can, you know, go back to work and not feel like we're gonna die. We had two months of downtime and that yeah. was it. So that you really don't have time to do it. You can basically get your taxes done, <laughs> try to get some sun. Chris had a film come out, Underworld, which is really exciting for us. We all went to see it, so that was nice. But it's it's hard when you don't have much time to fit other other projects in. Yeah, but this year we'll have a little more time, so we'll do it. So Hollywood, watch out. That's right. <laughs> okay. Great. I think I think we're done. Any any other last minute questions that you guys want to get? Yes. One more. <laughs> uh, one of our favorite uh, scenes with uh, Kenzie was the one with the chainsaw, and I was wondering. Uh, what was your favorite scene in each has that's, that's not played. It's not out U.S. wise. That's right. Okay. <laughs> that hasn't aired in that the U.S. yet. That hasn't aired in the yet. <laughs> so <laughs> let's hop. Let's so hop maybe we can ask that later. Sorry. What? 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 No. What? No. Uh, uh, no. And obviously. Lumberjack episode. Lumberjacking. That's right. Mm. <laughs> 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 that's the the so the tree nobody bay. get too excited. She's wearing suspenders and. She is a lumberjack. Just cleaning up the backyard. Yeah, there's a log rolling episode.